Hello class, my name is Thomas Crowfoot, and today I will be presenting my assignment called Wired vs. Wireless Networks Online. Um, this is for the class ITT370. Um, to get started, going over question number one, the differences between wired and wireless networks. How does the OSI model differ at the physical and data link layers? Um, so a wired network is where the device is connected using Ethernet wires. And the Ethernet wire goes from the router, modem, gateway directly to the device. Um, this is seen everywhere now. We see this in schools, libraries, even personal houses. Um, my personal setup is going from my modem Ethernet wire to my PC. Wireless network connection is the device using radio waves. This is mostly called Wi-Fi. Um, everyone should know what Wi-Fi is, but for those non-tech savvy people listening in, um, even my mother who's very non-tech savvy, Wi-Fi goes from your router or gateway, um, sending radio, wa radio waves to your desired device, which is going to be most of the time your cell phone or tablet. I even have Wi-Fi running to everything in my house, my Fire Stick, my Chromecast, my Xbox, my Nintendo Switch, and so on. Now, when it comes to the OSI model, the physical layer is the lowest layer on the OSI. The physical layer is part of the hardware layer and the physical connection between the devices, and it contains information from in the form of bits. Um, so whenever the physical layer is um, working on transferring the data, it will translate the received message into zero and ones, and then it will send it over to the data link layer. The data link layer is um, number two on the OSI model. It is responsible for making sure that the data transfer is error free. Uh, and whenever the data is being received, it would use something called MAC addressing. Um, and it will use a MAC addressing to transmit the data to the host. Um, just from myself reviewing the OSI layer, I see that the data link layer is one of the more important layers, if not the most important, because whenever the host is sending data to the receiver, if the receiver is unable to open the message due to some type of error, that's because it failed on the data link layer. And the message is no good if the receiver cannot open it, especially if something to do with um, business or some type of classified information. Yeah, I've even had it where I've sent something to friends and they're unable to open it. They get error 404, invalid URL or something like that. Just a little frustrating, but if everything runs smoothly, it would be error free. The next question on the list is comparison of the security risk on the wireless network versus the wired network. So wireless networks are less secure compared to wired networks. Wireless networks must be secured correctly as assisting a wireless network can be done discreetly and does not require physical access to the building. So earlier this week, we talked about war driving in um, DQ1. And war driving is super easy if it's done correctly. If someone is rolling by your house or by the corporate building and they are able to remotely locate the Wi-Fi and gain access to it, then they will have basically full access to your infrastructure. Where compared to a wired network, um, they're connected through, you know, the wires, the Ethernet, and that makes them way more secure. Since war driving feeds off Wi-Fi, the war driving aspect is completely eliminated, and those hackers are, are unable to gain access since you're all running straight wire, straight Ethernet. Not to say that a wired network is completely um, bulletproof, because there are ways that hackers are able to gain remote access to the system especially if you're just running wires only. Just makes it a little more tough. 
On to the third question is description of the unique security and operational attributes in the wireless environment and their effects on network communications. So wireless security is typically delivered through router or switch that has encryptions and secures all wireless communication. If a hacker attempts to gain access, they'll be unable to due to the encryptions. And there are many different ways hackers can gain access to the network. And there's also many different ways that we are able to secure our wireless networks. One way that a hacker is able to attack our network is using something called passive capturing. Passive capturing is accomplished by setting up devices within range of the Wi-Fi. Um, and listening to the data traffic traveling along the network and capturing the information. To prevent the passive capturing, it is used by encryption methods. And after researching a lot more about the encryption methods, one of the ones that kept popping up as highly recommended is WEP2, which is just an embedded code that is a higher encryption code where if the attacker attempts to retrieve your classified data, then the classified data is gonna be unrecognizable, won't be able to be read, it'd be jumbled letters and just useless to them because your data is now encrypted, encrypted correctly. The last question on the assignment is ex examination of mitigation strategies and tools that can be implemented to lessen the security risk associated with wireless networks. Mitigation strategies are used to keep up with never any technology changes. Everyone in this world is aware technology is always changing, it's changing rapidly. And old devices are becoming obsolete and iPhones and Androids are dropping new phones every year. Even my iPhone X, iPhone 10, I guess, is on the edge of being obsolete now just because they're on iPhone uh, 14 Pro now, which is insane, but it's very interesting. So to mitigate has many options, including enable security features, changing um, the default settings, um, SSID and passphrase and disabling the dynamic host configuration protocol, DHCP. So the SSID and passphrase is whenever we receive a new modem, router, or gateway combo from our ISP, internet service provider, it's gonna have a default SSID and passphrase as your Wi-Fi name and password. So this is probably the one the most commonly um, seen is people changing their Wi-Fi name, changing their password. Typically, people change their Wi-Fi name to be um, super easy to identify, like Iron Man, Spider Man, Crash Bandicoot, or whatever. And then their as their passphrase is something that they're able to remember and enter it. Typically, we see that people's passphrases are extremely simple. It's like, oh, it's my last name with the letter one. It's my dog's name with the letter two, and so on. Yes, it is ideal to change those, but we want to make sure that the passphrase is more encrypted and harder to, to guess and gain access to. So instead of putting your last name with a number, we can put um, randomized letters, numbers, and special characters throughout it where it doesn't have any meaning to you, so no one can easily gain access to the network. Um, and also the the DHCP is enabled on most routers when you receive it from your ISP. And I know that the Teletech brand, it is um, used by CenturyLink on their gateway brands are C1000A, C3000A, C3000Z, and those continuous series where the DHCP will automatically provide an IP address to anybody authorized or not. So if 
let's say that there's an employee at CenturyLink, if they just pull up your account and remotely gain access to your GUI, they can see your IP address and your wireless networks, they can do it all. So it is recommended to go through and disable that feature whenever you receive your router or gateway modem from your ISP. Another thing that the DHCP does that is pretty nifty is let's say your buddy comes over to your house, they connect to your Wi-Fi, and then they leave. And if they come back, they're automatically reconnected. And that's because the DHCP, or at least on those routers and gateways, store the IMA, IMEI number to the, the gateway. So if you disable it and your buddy leaves and they come back, it's like, oh, You've been gone for too long. I don't know who you are. You lost connection. So, the, so that essentially makes them re-enter the password again. And if your friend or that person who's connected attempts war driving on your house, it makes it a lot more difficult because you're no longer connected. And this is the references page. But I do want to thank everybody for tuning in. I hope you all have a good rest of your night.